Next in line is technical indicators. Right? Now, what we are trying to do is basically combining uh, three indicators where uh, RSI is above 70, CCI above 160, and Williams above minus uh, 20, which means that it is overbought by three indicators. Reset, technical indicator, RSI above 70, CCI above Williams above minus 20. If you see that you've put a wrong value here, this automatically becomes red and you'll get red signal here. Right? So uh, it, it helps you to uh, adjust immediately uh, these values. So three criteria that we selected here. Let's run to see if we get anything. Okay. So RSI is greater than 70, CCI is greater than this. So we find quite a few stocks which are clearly in the overbought range. So when market suddenly moves up, we'll find a lot of stocks in the overbought range, right? So there's a lot of money which is coming in. And the three indicators that we have chosen, they are all here. You can always mix and match more indicators depending on your need. But this is a simple illustration of uh, how you can mix and match multiple indicators. If you are in purely in the overbought over sold category, you can add even more uh, over here. Next in line. Is RSI below 30 on? Now this one is more of a cross tick, right? In, so in a single, in a single uh, this thing filter, you can use daily, weekly, and monthly text. So reset this. This time we are going into RSI smooth. Guys, remember a lot of a uh, lot of tools uses RSI smooth as RSI. So you may have confusion that our RSI doesn't match that. So if RSI doesn't match, you may want to try RSI Smooth with your favorite or with your brokerage tool. So this is below 30 on Splenetic. Splenetic is daily. Add another one on weekly. Add another one below monthly. And this no stocks. Yeah, we find one stock in the multi cap, right? So policy bazaar, right? Where the RSI is lower than that level on the three text, right? So this is how you can use caustic to do things. RSA indicator, rising, rising indicator. Okay. So rising indicator, reset everything, ADX, trending up for, let's see, index, all right, the results have come in. So, what this screens again, Adani's siblings are coming. All right. So when you click here, you'll see that ADX, right? ADX is a uh, green line here. If you see ADX is green line, the green line is continuously trending up right? for the period that we have chosen. Okay. We'll cover what ADX is when we cover some of the technical details, uh, maybe in subsequent weeks, uh, to give you an idea about some of the key indicators that uh, generally. Uh, uh, um, basically, uh, analyst list use. So that covers ADX rising indicator. Then price within certain range. Price within certain range of PSA, right? No, yes. yes. So parabolic SAR price within two percent. Percent of parabolic sun. All right, run this. All right, so basically, you'll find the stocks where the parabolic sun is within two percent of the price, right? Very close, so it, it moves up and down, but this, this place is within two percent. 
So it will give you an idea that where it could be heading. Uh, like when it comes very close, then there could be a change in direction. It's coming very close, the direction change. Comes very close, direction change. And when the direction change, uh, it signals a lot of things. All right, uh, looking, looking at some of the questions. Uh, how to find RSI trending above 60? Uh, I assume that the question is to see that RSI is crossed above 60, right? So I'll explain that to you. Relative strength crossing above 60. So this is how you, you'll find that RSI is crossed above 60. So when you look at this one, uh, crossing above 60 is so the better view would be is to go maximize. See, this one is 56 and it has gone to 63. Right? So this is how you do it. Okay. So next in the series is Bollinger Band Squeeze. Now Bollinger Band Squeeze is a very, very powerful one as we discussed in some of the sessions before. Uh, so basically what does Bollinger tells you? Uh, let's look at the Bollinger Band first. So uh, let's say we are looking at, let's not go to squeeze, let's look at Bollinger Band, right? So price above Bollinger Band, run it. Okay. So this will tell you all the stocks which are above Bollinger Band. Now, if you see the moment of Bollinger, right? Whenever they, so, so basically this band is a band of volatility, right? It is based on a certain standard deviation. So if, if the volatility is high, the band becomes very wide, like from here, it has gone to here. Right? If you look at this, there are certain cases where the volatility is much lower. So the price range is there, the band gets narrow. So band contingency goes up, down, up, down, based on this thing. Now, what does narrow narrow uh, band means? Narrow band means is the volatility is low. So that's what we are trying to do here is, when we go to squeeze, right? Uh, we go to squeeze of any type, run it. You'll find that the stocks, there's, 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 there is basically a, a narrowness in the band, right? So the band is going up, down. So here, there's a narrowness in the band. Right? There's a narrowness in the band. After a huge volatility, the stock is somehow consolidating. And the area where it goes, whether up or down, there could be a breakout or breakdown. So very important tool, right? So uh, what we have is, we have lots and lots of different options available for you for breakout breakdown uh then uh, uh the narrow range uh or basically of uh, bandwidth using keltner band uh using uh, uh using other options right so we have three options one is bandwidth uh second is bandwidth range and third is keltner band using this thing so if you are familiar with uh Bollinger band you go ahead and fine tune things like there are a lot of options you fine tune to some things which gives you very good results. Now here, the results which are coming is basically pretty, pretty good, right? Narrowing band. Uh, if you feel this is good, well and good. If you feel that the certain fine tuning is required, uh, then you can always fine tune using these uh, additional parameters. Right? If you're not very comfortable, start with the default ones. Right? So that is Bollinger Band Squeeze. Price cross above Ichimoku cloud. Now Ichimoku looks like a very, very comp. First of all, the name itself is very complex, and, and the chart looks even more complex. Right? But uh, it's quite useful. I must say that it's quite useful. So taking you to Ichimoku, right? I take one or two very simple screens because explaining Ichimoku itself is a, a complete session. Right? Click on Ichimoku, and the price cross above the cloud. So price cross. So if you see the option here, it's says hundred plus options, right? So there are a lot of options here. So price cross above clouds. When you look at this one, look at the stocks where the price is crossed above the clouds. Now, unlike others, right? Unlike others, Ichimoku moves lot. There's a lot of leading and there are a lot of lagging uh, indicators or parameters. So when you look at the chart of Ichimoku, the price ends here. The, you'll see a lot of things which are going in the future and a lot of things which are in the Past, right? So certain things on the day of trading, a lot of things in the future, and a lot of things in the past. Right? So there are five or six different variations. Now, 
the screener that we are looking here is where the price has crossed above the cloud. So this is the cloud, right? I won't explain a lot about Ichimoku because that's beyond the scope of this particular session, but we'll definitely try to cover when we do that. So this is about Ichimoku, how to use Ichimoku in the screener. Divergence of ultimate oscillator. Okay. Now, divergence is something where you have a price moving in certain direction and your uh, indicator moving in the other direction. So that's a second, de second level derivative. Right? First level derivative is the indicator itself. Second de level derivative is divergence on that. So a lot of people find it very useful of using the divergence. Uh, we have so the thing that we are looking for is ultimate oscillator. Over here, we have five bullish and five bearish divergence. For the simplicity of the uh, session, I'll take one bullish divergence. You can choose multiple together. right? So this screen is where you can choose multiple different things. Bullish, bearish, weak, hidden potential. A brief write-up is here, right? uh, which will give you a basic idea. Otherwise, there are a lot of literature available on internet where you can read these things and make best use of these divergence. So when you click on uh, the bullish divergence of ultimate uh, using uh, ultimate oscillator uh, run it right so bitcoin oh sorry not bitcoin why i'm saying bitcoin <laughs> biocon <laughs> right a uh, biocon uh, shows that divergence so when you look at this uh, what divergence it is the price is coming down no so bullish right Okay, so it's a very short term one, not, not a very good one. Let's look at some better ones in terms of divergence. Uh, this one is not showing good results. So let's change it to maybe something like more common RSI bullish divergence. Which are options? No. Okay. Divergence is a little less common pattern. Okay. Right. So in uh, this thing, and you see 500, we find quite a few ones. Let's see if anyone is very clear. Right? If you see that price is making lower levels, whereas divergence or whereas the indicator is going at a higher level, right? So this is what is called divergence. I uh, won't explain divergence in this session. Uh, again, that's a complete session altogether. Uh, but this is how you'll find divergence, where the price movement is different than uh, the indicator movement. The, where do you find it? The values are mentioned here. Like any anything else, the values are mentioned down here. All right, so that pretty much covers the technical indicators that we wanted to cover on uh, Custom Screener. There are certain exercises available for you. Uh, you. You can always work on these things. 